YouTubers, Ryan back with another episode of San Diego Beer Vlog, a very special episode as you can see. This is beer review number 200 and I decided to break out a very special, very limited beer to, to review for you guys for number 200. So it's been a lot of fun doing these beer reviews. Can't believe I'm already at 200. Uh, I started early August of 2010 and got the 200 reviews in uh, about mid-September or so, towards the end of September. So. I'm going to celebrate with Lost Abbey and their Veritas series. This is Veritas number 9. If you can see that on, on the cork, that's where the 009 is. All these labels are, are the same for each Veritas beer, I believe. I have not seen every single one, but I remember I was seeing, I have sampled Veritas uh, 3, so I've seen that label. I think it was pretty much the same setup. They all, or I have 8 and 9 myself. Both say 8% ABV. Uh, I believe this beer is much higher than 8% because Veritas 9 is a very special creation. I believe this started out as the base beer being Old Viscosity. It then spent 15 months in, I believe, bourbon barrels. Then it spent another 15 months in some, I believe, red wine barrels. Then after another, it got 15 months, they added in some, I believe, tart cherries. I'm going all memory on this one. Got to let it go another 15 months. Ended up bottling it because uh, I thought it tasted good enough and then let it age for, I believe, like almost a year just in the bottle. So unfortunately, this is from the time when they were having their carbonation issues. So I don't expect a lot of carbonation on this one, but let's get it popped. And I have tried this. I was at the release. I got two tasters of it. So I'm kind of an idea what it's going to be. So, and that, that beer didn't have a whole lot of carbonation. So it's a style that I don't expect a ton of carbonation on. And nor would the style dictate it. But yeah, not much of a pop. Oh, wow. I can, I can smell it just pouring it. And you can see this is pretty, pretty dark beer. I'm not going to get much of a head on it. I mean, this beer spent a ton of time in barrels. Uh, wow, Woo. I can smell it from here. You can see there's some bubbles lacing around. Um, appearance wise, it's very, very dark, pretty much black. The little bit of uh, bubbles on there is like a very uh, light brown color. Oh man, this, this beer is potent. I can smell it just. Oh wow. The nose is very complex. Um, you kind of hit up front with vinous notes and bourbon notes, big time. I mean, a ton of oak woodiness. I'm picking cherries, definitely get cherries. Tart cherries, big time vinous note, red wine, you know, deep, dark, um, uh, really vinous notes, like the mo most I've ever smelled on a beer. Sort of this softer vanilla note kind of in there. Um, slight bit of maybe like a hints of like chocolate. If it's old, Viscosity is the base. I don't think they use roasted barley in that beer, which is why it's not considered a imperial stout. Um, yeah, I'm starting to pick up definitely some more vanilla. I have this kind of cool right now. It's not too cold. I should maybe have uh, put it in the refrigerator for a little shorter time. Oh, what else is in there? Maybe like some toasted coconut kind of character. Um, smells great. Um, let's dig in. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, cheers to Beer Review 200. Oh, wow. It That's just a huge mouthfeel and it goes on seemingly forever. Wow, it's still like going on. Completely coats your mouth. I'm guessing this beer is somewhere around 14% old, older viscosity, which is essentially what this beer was until they moved it to wine barrels, is like 12, 12.5% ABV. So I think this one's got to be above that. Um, I assume the wine barrels, I mean, it picked up a lot of vinous notes from those barrels, so I assume that it probably picked up a couple more percentage in the alcohol. Um, 14%, it's very smooth, it's still present. Um, you feel the warming sensation going down, but it's not very prominent in the taste. 
Speaking of taste, let's get another one. Up front is big tartness. Sour cherries. Big time sour cherries. Then it kind of, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a big roller coaster on the palate. Very, very complex. Um, yeah, very tart, um, acidic cherries. Oh, wow, I get like different, different things going on every taste. This is really hard to review. That's the first thing I know. Big ch tart cherries. Then it goes into vinous notes. Big time kind of, you know, just wine-like grape notes, fruitiness, like um, like a raspberry, sort of, uh, you know, darker berry, like currants, like black currants kind of flavor after the ch it kind of transitions from the sour cherries, or more tart, tart cherries. Then it transitions into essentially older viscosity, which has this big vanilla bourbon, uh, kind of just that earthy wooden characteristic finished, you know, chocolate going on. And then it finishes with sort of, um, I don't know, like a stringent um, kind of fruitiness, but like in a good way. It's hard to say. It's just, it's a very, very bold beer. So I don't know if you can see that on my glass, but there's some pretty amazing alcohol legs going on. It, you can see a touch of lacing on there. It, it is carbonated. It's very low, lowly carbonated. Um, it is more carbonated than the Cuvée de Tommy uh, 2010 bottle I had. Um, but I mean, this is this is reasonable carbonation for this kind of complex of a beer because it has such big barrel characteristics on it. It's it's nuts. It has you know big bourbon notes, big wine notes. I mean, those are carbonated beverages. And this is definitely wine level in terms of alcohol. It clearly is, although it's masked really, really well. I mean, you just feel it. That's it. I mean, it, it, obviously it has a lot of age on it since they first made this beer. It's scary how smooth and drinkable this thing is. It really is. Uh, the the mouthfeel. I mean, it's it's medium, kind of medium full. Doesn't quite get go completely coats your mouth, but it does fairly good job of it. I mean, there's a lot of lingering notes on this beer. I mean, uh, for the palate, it kind of takes a little bit getting used to that the tartness up front from the cherries. Once you get past that, I mean, it's a big, 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 long finish. Probably the longest finish I've ever had in a beer. And, and kind of like after the beer's gone down, a lot of flavors kind of keep rolling through your mouth and your taste buds. Because it's so bold in its barrel characteristics that I keep mentioning. It, but yet, there's, there's some nice subtlety in there. Those worms get a slight bit of more like caramel notes in it. Um, that toasted coconut is getting the smell definitely is coming through as well. This is one of those beers you want to just uh, take a sip and let it kind of sit on your tongue a while. Just because of the complexity, um, as I do that I get some more vanilla notes in the back end. You definitely get some oak tannins going. Slight kind of smoky char character that would like come from the inside of a barrel. Uh, there's also a bit of a saltiness to the beer as well, not in a soy sauce sense, but just kind of like more of an umame kind of uh, flavor going on with it that kind of has the saltiness as well. I can see this beer being pretty much a love it or hate it type of beer. Uh, if you're into big barrel characteristic beers, I think this one is definitely worth trading for. If you have the firepower to get it, it was very limited. I think they released about a thousand bottles, but each person could buy up to four, so, and I think most people did. And it was very expensive as well. This bottle was $35. So, uh, is it worth the $35 for this beer? I think it is, but you guys know, I'm a beer geek. I like these barrel-aged beers, these, you know, and they did a really good job with this, giving it um, some flavors and tastes in a beer that I've never had before in the combination into one beer, and they, they managed to do it with this one. So I'm going to give this one an A. I think it's excellent. I'm a fan of those bolder flavors. But then there's still, you know, there's some subtle complexity in there as well. But, I mean, if you want a beer that combines big wine barrel characteristics and big 
bourbon barrel characteristics, this is the one to get. Um, if, you, if you can find it, if you can trade for it at this point. So it's going to wrap it up for beer review number 200. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments. And subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, cheers.